this is Loch Torridon, out in the Northwest Highlands, and this is the geological map that was created in the later part of the 19th century. Let's use this map to explore the landscape and tell the geological history of this remarkable area. That hill in the clouds is Ben Allegan. That's Loch Torridon and its shores have some of the oldest geology in the British Isles. And there's some really great outcrops. So, the high hills at the back there are the Torridon Group sandstones informally known as the Torridonian. And then down here, well we've got Louisian rocks. So let's start off looking at the Louisian and we can go across Loch Torridon to the north side. The Louisian is the pink area on the map with green stripes. Well I'm here on the north side of Loch Torridon in the Diabeg Inlier, which is a patch of Louisian geology that's exposed from beneath the Torridonian sandstones. Let's have a scout around and see what we can find. It's a pretty rugged landscape. A lot of rock in here. Much of this ground is quartzofelspathic banded gneisses, streaky with migmatitic seams. And then if you scout around, you can find within these gneisses, these mafic inclusions. So it looks like the crust started off in this fairly mafic composition and then was invaded by quartzofelspathic material, which dominates the outcrops here. And then the mafic enclaves and the quartzofelspathic gneisses have been streaked out, forming a gneissic banding, a regional deformation. And then crossing that mixture of gneisses with those mafic enclaves are more continuous mafic sheets, such as you can see on the outcrop behind me. But you can see the edge of the mafic unit, which is lower on the outcrop, clearly truncates the banding and aligned mafic enclaves in the paler gneisses above. So it's a later intrusion. On the map there are these green stripes. Well if you map out these uh, mafic intrusions they trace out as dikes and they generally form readily eroded gully systems through the landscape. But if you scout around, you can find good outcrops. And within them, you can see preserved in the core of these dikes, just slightly modified igneous textures with the segregations of the whiter feldspars. But you go to the margins of the dikes, commonly these Igneous textures become streaked out and deformed, defining a foliation. So the margins of the dikes and the country rocks are deformed by a new foliation that postdates the crystallisation of the dikes. So these Louisian rocks show a protracted history of igneous intrusion and deformation. The later mafic intrusions are called the scoury dike swarm and they're found throughout the Louisian outcrop. I've scattered around these outcrops a bit and we've now come across some pretty horrendous geological vandalism. Look at these outcrops just down here. And you can see just how long lived the damage is because this lichen has now colonised this core hole. They're here forever. Geologists need to be able to sample to do 
studies for paleomagnetism and geochemistry to take rocks back to the laboratory. There's no excuse for wrecking world-class outcrops like this, especially as all you need to do is simply to carefully excavate the turf here, pull the turf away carefully, drill and then put the turf back and no one will know you've been here. This rock damage is really old. We have to hope that uh, young generation modern earth scientists don't do this sort of thing. So these outcrops tell a great geological story. It's a shame about the geological vandalism, but we mustn't let that distract us from this great geology here in the Darbeg in Lyre. Well, these Lewisian rocks not only on the Dyerbeg in Lyre, but over here on the south side of Loch Torridon in the Shieldaig in Lyre. Well, they were mapped by John Wheeler in the early part of the 1980s. Let's have a look at his maps. John mapped the Scarry dikes here in the Mauve and broke out the surrounding gneisses into two types. A smooth gneiss, which we've seen as the rock with mafic enclaves, along with tracts of more deformed rocks he called flaggy gneiss. And there's lots of flaggy ice, along with sheer scary dikes, now amphibolite sheets, on the south side of the loch. So in these outcrops we can see the amphibolites smeared out to parallel with the surrounding gneisses. The dark amphibolites and the gneisses above and the fabric in both and the boundary are parallel. Everything's smeared together. So deformation that postdates the intrusion of these amphibolitic dikes. Okay, well this is a pretty scruffy cutting, but it's really dramatic in some natural outcrops. So we see the fabrics in the dike and in the surrounding gneisses are parallel, as is the boundary between dike and country rock. Everything's smeared out in this deformation. Well this deformation, which postdates the dikes, it's called the Laxfordian after its type area in Sutherland at Laxford Bridge. These gneisses almost look like they're sedimentary, almost looks like bedding going up this hillside, but it's not. That's just all those rock layers in the Lewisian complex smeared out to be parallel. That's a deformation fabric. It's a major shear zone. So a set of field relationships between different nice types and those amphibolite sheets. And John used those to build up a history of deformation within this part of the Louisian. The oldest gneisses at Torridon are dated a shade older than 3,100 million years old. But intrusion and deformation probably continued to around 2,700 million years ago. And this forms the crust of northwest Scotland. The Scarry dikes were intruded over a period between about 2.4 and 2 billion years. The Laxfordian deformation is around 1900 to 1800 million years old. So there's well over a billion years of crustal evolution contained in these Lewisian rocks at Torridon. Well, so much for the Louisian. What about those Torridon group rocks that lie on top? Well, the hills at Glen Torridon are typically obscured by cloud. They're a bit of a weather magnet. But these rocks are sediments. They're mostly about a billion years old. Sandstones, just gently dipping and unmetamorphosed. To see these rocks in better weather, let's go off to the coast, out on the Applecross Peninsula.
So this is the Apple Cross formation. Pretty spectacular cross bedded sandstones. Well, if we zoom in, we can see that the grain size in this is pretty coarse. It's a coarse sandstone uh, in background, but then there are these um, granules and even small pebbles. So it's a pretty coarse sediment. And it's variations in grain size that defines the cross bedding. So these sandstones are deposited by rivers a billion years ago. Well, these thick bedded sandstones are the Apple Cross formation. We're down here at sea level, but it's these rocks that form the big peaks in the Torridon area. So the Torridon grew, a one billion year old sedimentary cover to the Louisian crust of northwest Scotland. Loch Torridon map, a great map for building up a history of Precambrian geology in northwest Scotland.